Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a fantastic time to click that link below, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and you won't miss out on any of our amazing future content. Today's video, we are gonna be doing a full brand review. If you're feeling familiar with this series on the channel, this is where we take a whole brand available at drugstore prices, and we tear it apart. We look at each individual product in that brand, the good, the bad, the pros, the cons, those that you need in your life, and those products that you just need to stay away from. Hopefully, um, at the end of this, you'll know all about the brand, you'll understand which products to go for, which to avoid, and it'll save you a little bit of cash on those products which just don't deliver the goods. Today, we're talking Lush. You would not believe the number of people that have begged me, both subscribers and casual watchers of the channel, to do a review on Lush. I've always hesitated because Lush epitomized, or used to epitomize, the if it's natural, it must be great skincare ethos. And I've always said, just because a product or an ingredient is natural, it doesn't mean it's safe, it doesn't mean it's effective, and it doesn't mean it's good for your skin. However, I think all brands deserve a second chance, and Lush have really upped their game recently. They've reformulated, they've taken out a lot of the potentially irritating natural ingredients from their product. They've inserted some fantastic extra um, natural ingredients. They've kept their ethos, but they've really reformulated and upped all their products. And so I thought every... Every brand deserves that second chance. You guys want it, I'm gonna deliver it. So I bought a range of their products. I'm gonna talk about each one individually and then we're gonna do the pros and cons of the overall brand. Normally I would say the prices, um, however, with Lush, the pricing varies wildly depending on the territory and the country that you're living in. So I'm gonna leave the pricing out of this. This is just to say that generally all these products cost less than £10, $15. So it's very much drugstore and affordable, but um, I'd encourage you to look at the prices um, in whichever country you're living in because or purchasing in because it does more than any other company their pricing seems to be very dependent on um i guess how easy it is to get the natural products which go into these um at the time of me filming this video all these products were available so if they've sold out i do apologize it's been since i've been filming this but they were all available slightly different to um, what we normally do and um, because there are so many products with Lush and again they vary country by country with what's available and what's not i actually thought instead of reviewing everything i'll go online they had their eight Full disclosure from Lush, they have their eight best selling products, the ones that bring them the most coin listed on their website. So I thought, great, I'll just pick those eight. And I'm glad I did, because we've got some star, ding, 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 amazing products, and we've got some total wah, 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 duds. So let's get straight into it and start with the number one best selling product from Lush worldwide, and that is the Angels on Bare Skin Cleanser. I'm gonna leave an image of it there. I am so glad we're starting with this. This is a best seller for a reason. Straight off the bat, 10 out of 10. I adore this product. It is an almond meal based cleanser. It's got lavender there. It's got kaolin in there. It comes in a solid block. You scoop um, a little bit out. You mix it with water. It turns to a paste and you apply it as you would a cleanser. Wash it off. It's slightly gritty. I wouldn't say gritty is the wrong word because it's not going to give any manual exfoliation or damage. It's just there's a different texture there to it. That's with the almond meal. Almond is fantastic at soothing calming and hydrating the skin. The kaolin is brilliant for drawing out all the extra excess oil that you might have in your skin. And lavender is a, just a really nice scent. I would caution anybody who is sensitive to essential oils. This has lavender in, so just you might want to rethink this one if you are very sensitive to fragrance and essential oils. I think this is really a theme of Lush, and I'll get onto that more later in the video. Um, if you are very dry skinned, again, I'd avoid this one because the kaolin will suck out some of the um, oils which really you need to preserve in your skin. But if you're normal, combination, or oily, this could be your dream cleanser. I'm gonna repurchase this. I don't think it's gonna be my daily cleanser because I'm hooked on the Inculist Oat Cleansing Balm, as you all know, but I do love this. There's that little bit of treat. If I want that scent, that pick me up, that wake up, it is beautiful. The lavender actually makes it fantastic before you go to bed because lavender is very calming, soothing, centering. I love this. This is a ding, 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 yes, 10 out of 10 product. I love it and we are off to a flying start. Second best selling product is the Rosy Cheeks Fresh Face Mask. I'm gonna leave an image of it there for you. I didn't purchase this one. The reason I didn't is I cannot stand the scent of rose. and I knew I wouldn't enjoy it and I didn't want to have a negative opinion of a product just because of the scent. So I've looked at the ingredients and I had a quick whiff in the shop and yep, yeah, it's as rosy as you think it's gonna be. So full disclosure, if you don't like rose, skip you're gonna hate this product but 
This has um, calamine um, in it, which is fantastic. It's a centuries old remedy for calming, soothing, and removing redness from the skin. It's got rose and it's got a kaolin base again. The kaolin is going to balance and sort any excess oil production in the skin out, which is fantastic again if you're on the oilier side. The chamomile um, and calamine is going to just calm the skin and soothe it. This is a great, going to be a great mask after an exfoliation if it leaves you a little bit red. Again, wouldn't say it's good for people with dry skin just because the kaolin is going to take out some of that moisture. But for everybody else, this is fantastic. I do caution you, the smell is there and it is real. That rose is like and hits you. And because it's a mask and you're leaving it on, you're going to have that for a good 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to caution you, if you like rose, this is a great product. For everyone else, it obviously would be a miss. But I, I really like this. I'm going to give it a, an 8 out of 10. Just because I don't like the rose, I'm going to knock a few marks off. But do you know what? A great product all the same. Now we're moving on to another mask. This is a theme. Their best-selling products seem to be their masks. And I think that's probably right. Because actually, if you're using fresh ingredients, and none of these products have a long shelf date um, and use by date, because they are all freshly formulated and they cut right down on preservatives um, and things like that in it. So... I think masks are the sort of thing that you can use regularly and use up so you get to use the full product before it expires. Um, I would recommend you check the expiry date on all of these and stick rigidly to it because they do spoil quite quickly after that expiry date. So just bear that in mind. But the third best selling product is the Cupcake Fresh Face Mask. This is, oh, this is 10 out of 10 again. I'm going full 10 out of 10. I adore this product. It is cocoa and cocoa butter based. So you get the richness and the hydration of the cocoa butter. You get, um, it's got some mud in there. So it's not too comedogenic. It will help to bring out some of the oil in the skin as well. It's got fresh mint in there. So it really wakes you up and peps you up on a morning. 10 out of 10. Again, I'm still going to caveat this and this is going to be a theme throughout, but I'm going to caveat this to say, I don't, if you are sensitive to essential oils, particularly mint, which can be very sensitizing and triggering for people with sensitive skin, stay away from this. But if you're looking for that rich hydration with that chocolatey scent, that natural ingredients, this mask is a 10 out of 10, absolutely gorgeous. Don't blame me if you pile on the pounds after using this because I ate this and then ate a whole bar of green and blacks back green and black, so let me get my words out, um, dark chocolate. I have no regrets, but it definitely makes you crave chocolate. So maybe join me in our Face Mask Friday next week and get yourself a chocolate bar and a cocoa mask and let's binge eat and face mask at the same time. Now onto their fourth best product, which is the mask of uh, magnum magnanimity. I'm not saying that twice. Ah, this is where we have our first fail. And it's a doozy of a fail. This is absolutely terrible. I am giving this zero, zero out of 10. It has got peppermint oil, which again, super triggering if you are sensitive to essential oils or if you have um, any sensitivity at all. It's probably the most sensitive, most reactive of the essential oils and they've piled it in this. It is basically overpowering and can actually make your eyes water a little bit. It's got crushed evening primrose seeds in there. So it's scrub-like and it's abrasive. And it I used it probably once, had to wash it off. I just couldn't continue with it. Really, really, really hated this product. Nobody needs that level of scrub. Nobody needs that level of peppermint. It's not adding anything other than sensitivity. And I have no idea why people like this. I can only assume people would use it on their body because they're less worried about the abrasive scrub in a body. And I guess if you've got dry elbows, you might have dry feet, then there is a purpose to it. But I, it's, a, it's a firm no from me. I just, I don't like it at all. And I don't see any place for it. And it's sad, but do you know what? Three hits and one miss so far. Not doing too bad. Um, next is, oh, uh, but we're on to our winner now. I'm moving swiftly on to another ding, 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 10 out of 10 product. And this is what I love about Lush. I'm just going to pause to say, like, it's either all or nothing. You either get 10 out of 10 or zero out of 10. Their products are very hit and miss, but this is a hit. Uh, this is their Dream Cream Body Lotion. I love this. This is oat milk, rose, chamomile and olive oil, all packed together in a beautiful base in a sensational body and hand lotion. I wouldn't put this near your face because it's got olive oil in it and it's comedogenic and it will clog, clog, clog your pores. But for the rest of the body, it is divine. Oat, it soothes, calms, moisturises. Um, it's got the rose in there, but it's not overpowering. It actually, it kind of balances out the oat scent really nicely. It's got the chamomile in to soothe and it's got um, the olive oil in to hydrate and nourish the skin. This, if you have dry skin, 
on any part of your body, this should be your go-to moisturizer. Honestly, I fell in love. After the shower, you just put it on and it kind of just melts. I'm surprised. I thought with the olive oil, it would really, really sit on the skin and take forever to go into the skin. Not one problem. It just melted into the skin. Give it a minute to sink in and put your clothes on. There's no staining. There's no residue. It is gorgeous. I love this. They do almost say it's eczema safe. They say on their website, it's and people with eczema swear by this as a product. I am a little bit cautious. I don't like things that, to say that things are eczema safe unless it's been rigorously tested and suitable for people with eczema because it's a very specific skin condition. So I would probably ignore that advice and be cautious if you do have eczema or dermatitis and look for a specific tested in a clinical environment product. Um, but this is just a dream for everybody. Um, use it on the body, avoid the skin, and it's suitable for every single person and is a beautifully hydrating, gorgeous, silky, oh, best product by far, and I absolutely love it. Now we're coming on to something different. This was their um, sixth best-selling product, and I ummed and whether to include, include it because it's not skincare, it's shampoo. And... <sighs> I know that the scalp is skin and it, you have the same issues on the scalp. You can still have greasy, oily, you can still have flare-ups, you can get dermatitis on the scalp. You can get all of these things. So it is an extension of the face in that sense. However, it is very different in a lot of ways. But I thought, no, actually I like this product, so I'm gonna feature it. This is their new shampoo. Again, I'm gonna leave an image. I have been searching high and low for a zero waste shampoo. I think shampoos are one of the really easy ways of getting a zero waste product into your routine. There's so many out there, but I was finding one that I really liked. A lot of them are packed full of some nasties, which I'm not that keen on. I like um, a shampoo which does have a peppermint ele element to it because there is some science to say it stimulates the follicle, the hair growth to keep the hair healthy. I wouldn't like to lather peppermint on my face, but I think in the scalp it's absolutely fine. This is packed full of it. It's also zero waste. It just smells divine. You've got one bar um, and you think it's going to go down quite quick because it's not a big bar of soap, but it lasts probably 30 washes. There's no waste for packaging and it is beautiful and natural and just gorgeous. If you are looking for a zero waste shampoo definitely try out lush this is the new shampoo but they've got four or five different ones obviously i haven't tried them all but i will be repurchasing this and I think this could be my go-to shampoo I'm not going to say too much more on it because shampoo it's not really my area especially um, expertise but i'm putting it out there i love the product and i think it deserves to be the sixth best-selling product at lush it is beautiful now we're on to the seventh best which is where we come to the first maybe on the list, and this is their Sleepy Lotion. This is basically packed full of, again, oats, it's cleansing, it's got lavender, and they're using the lavender as a way to send you to sleep and that aromatherapy benefit. Do I like this product? I think the lavender was a little bit too much for me. I thought it was greasy, the product, and it didn't sink in properly. I think if you have drier skin on the body, I think you would work better with this. If you like the smell of lavender, again, I think you'll enjoy this product. I personally prefer lavender mist on the pillow if I'm going to use it. Um, this didn't sink in well enough for me. I felt greasy under the sheets, and for me, it was a pass. But I think if you're dry skinned, you'll enjoy this. So I'm going to give the sleepy lotion a five out of 10. Um, depends on the person that's using it as to whether they'll enjoy it, I think. But I definitely think there's potential in the product. It just wasn't right for me. Finally, and I really hate to do this. I'm ending on a negative and I hate to end on a negative. I like to start on a positive and end on a positive and all the crap can go in between, sandwiched in between. But actually, this was the, I did it in the order that they sell. So this is the 10th best selling and this is the Cup O Coffee Scrub. Now I'm surprised this is only the 10th best selling product because this is the one that you see all over Instagram, all over Twitter, you see it in the magazines. People go mad for this and it is a firm pass. Coffee, caffeine, grey, it stimulates the skin, it can re and help with circulation, water retention, fantastic. Not in a ground coffee bean scrub and I mean this scrub is brutal. I wouldn't put it anywhere near your face and I wouldn't even use it on your body. If you want a scrub, go for the mask of magnanimity um, scrub for the body. I still don't like it, but it's better than this. This is just so abrasive and almost unpleasant to use. I don't know why anyone would want this level of aggressive exfoliation in their lives. I absolutely hated this product. I can't see anybody enjoying it. I don't know why Lush haven't ground the coffee beans more or just done away with it. Just had like the coffee and the caffeine without the scrub element. I'll leave it up to you to decide. That is the top eight best selling products at Lush. So guys, First of all, I want you to leave me a comment. Have you tried these products? Do you agree with my review? What do you think? 
I am gobsmacked with how many amazing Lush products there were. I really was prepared to hate all of these. I haven't got anything against clean, natural, all of these things. I just think often they don't live up to the hype and quite often they're so ineffective that actually I think it does a disservice to the whole um, environmental sustainability cause. Lush, you have changed my mind. I With this, we had, uh, my round reckoning, we had four ding, 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 absolutely need to buy, two maybes and two passes. That is a really good odds. That's up there with Inky List and The Ordinary. They had a similar ratio of good to bad. What I Overall, what are my thoughts? Well, A, really impressed. Low expectations, far exceeded them. I'm going to say the pros. Let's do the pros first. Cruelty-free. Love that. In 2020, we should be striving for cruelty-free, and they're absolutely fantastic. Sustainability and a good environmental record. You know if you're buying Lush that you're buying fairly traded products, you're buying sustainable products, and you're buying into a good environmental sustainability clause in their um, business ethos. And I love that about them. Um, I like how they've listened to some feedback, taken out some ingredients, added some new ones in, reformulated their product. That I love that. They've listened to feedback and I think it's great. Um, overall, just the quality of the products and the pricing. I mean, it's natural and yet it doesn't cost the earth. It's a really reasonably priced for the quality of ingredients you're getting. Now, on to the cons, the shelf life. All of these are natural. All of these are freshly made or to some extent they have a short shelf life. So just make sure you, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a con. I'm just saying, make sure you look at the expiry date on these and you stick rigidly to it because if you wait a few weeks after, they will spoil and they will be rancid and you don't want them near your face. So I definitely would say, Make sure you're just very clear on what the expiry date is and make sure that you check that in the shop. We're not used to doing this, going in the shop and skincare and looking at the expiry date like you would on like fresh food. But double check that and make sure you're getting a good date and you use it within that date. Um, another con for me is just the level of essential oils and fragrance. Natural, but still fragrance that are in there. I don't think it's problematic for most people, but if you are sensitive or you find any of these ingredients triggering, I just think you're going to have to avoid this brand. And I think that's a shame because I think if they paired it back a bit, took away some of that essential oils in there and some of those particularly triggering such as lavender and peppermint i think they'd have a wider customer base and more people would be able to enjoy the product without worrying about a sensitivity reaction so that is a negative but only if you are sensitive to that or you really want to avoid that Overall, I think this is a fantastic brand. I love that they're international. I love that they have the same standards across the world. They don't, you know, manufacture better in one country than another, which some shady companies do do. They've got the same standards, the same ethos, and I think they're absolutely fantastic. Let me know what you think, guys. Um, I'm not going to do a giveaway. I normally do do a giveaway with this, but we've got one ongoing at the moment, the Breast of British Skincare. I'm going to leave a um, link to that video there. So enter the giveaway there if you'd like. I want to know what are your favourite Lush products. Do you agree with this top 10? Have I missed some out? Uh, are there some like, hidden gems that you want to shout about? Leave me a comment below. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Let me know which ones you want me to review next, wherever you are in the world, guys. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.